So would you drop Kane? Kane is another hot topic, and that question is from Igor Caravida. So Kane right now uh, is high up on the charts for every underlying stat that you want for a striker. Uh, he's one of the top scorers, which of course is important. He's got the third amount of attempts on goal, third highest amount of attempts on goal with 26. Um, below Mitrovic and Aguero, 34 and 38. Uh, as far as chances from inside the box, again, he's equal with Mitrovic. That puts him joint second. Big chance in total, he's second to Callum Wilson. Uh, shots on target, he's top 13 with Mitrovic. Uh, minute per chance at 27.6. Shot accuracy, 50%. Goal conversion, 19.2. So, that's decent. My issue is, without Ericsson and Ali, he seems to play a deeper role and allow Son and... Lucas Moura to get further forward. If I look at his heat map in general for the whole season, he's got a lot of hot spots in kind of the central midfield area and kind of to the left. And then he does have a hot spot right in the penalty box. But if we go to the last two game weeks, he's like, I can't actually show you the heat map because I'm not given permission to show you this website. But he has no hot spots in the opposition's area. The hot spots are very close to the halfway line, which is worrying. Uh, as far as penalty area touches, he does have 13. Attempts, 9. Goal attempts inside the box, 6. Shots on target, 5. Big chances, 2. Scored both of them. Believe they'll be from the uh, game before the Cardiff game. And then 2 chances created. But that heat map is just worrying. And like, if I compare him to someone like Lacazette, who has been doing well. I imagine Lacazette's heat map is going to look a lot more promising. It actually doesn't look that much better. If we go to Vardy, am I just making up the heat map problem? Let's just check a few more players. All right, if we go to Vardy, heat map wise. Okay, Vardy has some hot spots in the box. In fact, it's real intense hot spots in the uh, opposition box. Now, don't get me wrong, his underlying stats aren't as good, but I want my striker to be one of the furthest forward. I don't want him getting assists. I want him getting the goals. If we compare him to Aguero, I'm assuming Aguero will be dropping deep as well. But Aguero has higher underlying stats. No, heat map, he's further forward as well. While he drops back, I suppose because Man City plays so advanced anyway, his heat spots are just outside the box. So for me... There's a reason I never went for Kane. And don't get me wrong, I was as worried as anyone in the world that didn't own Kane that he would score loads against Cardiff. But he just hadn't done enough for me that I wanted to bring him in, even with that Cardiff game. So I didn't. And it, it works, don't get me wrong. Everyone that did transfer him in, everyone that did captain him, that decision was based in very, very good logic. And a lot of people that I know and I think are good at the game, brought him in, captained him, and it didn't work out. Kane is still a good player season long. Just, I don't feel like from what I've seen of him without Ericsson and without Ali, that I want him in my side. The website I use, by the way, Mo, is Fantasy Football Scout. Uh, it's a paid for membership site, but the all the stats, all the research, all of that stuff is all aimed for fantasy football players. And it's really, really helpful for getting a read on underlying stats and the such.